Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to cut half blind dovetails using the Porter Cable Deluxe Dovetail Jig. I am using the 4216 model, which is also known as a super jig, which comes with three different templates that can go on top as well as all the included accessories. So if you have a jig, check to see if you can do half blinds with it and to make sure that you have the router bits and other needed accessories. So. I have already done a video that I'll link above where I go through a very comprehensive setup of the jig as well as the router and give my final thoughts as far as a review of the unit itself. And in short, I, I really like it and uh, it simplifies the process a lot. So today we're going to be focusing on half blind dovetails, one of the, at least for me, one of the harder joints to cut by hand um, and one that actually looks fantastic on drawers and a number of other things, especially when you rabbit them in, which we can do as well. I'm not gonna be showing that today, but um, let's take a look at the accessories. Then we will set the jig up and I'll show you how we cut it. Okay, so to cut half blind dovetails, we actually really don't need that much. What we need is the half blind dovetail template. We need the dovetail bit. We need the template guide, the 42040, and we need the lock nut, which is already on that guide. So. Uh, very simple, um, about half of the, the accessories needed to cut through dovetails. So let's just take a quick look and, uh, and I'll show you all these accessories here. So we have the dovetail bit uh, in here, just to show you, there we go. Um, we have the guide bushing for it, uh, the 42040. Uh, then we have our Allen wrench, which is going to allow us to adjust a couple things on the jig. We have our wrenches and we have our router. And if you haven't checked out the other video, I do have a video where I show how to use Porter cable style guide bushings in Bosch routers using this adapter kit. So I'll link that above uh, for you to check out. But um, really that's all we need. We've got our work pieces. We're just gonna be doing these on the other end of this three quarter inch white oak that we use to show the through dovetails. So um, let's get to the setup of the jig itself and then we'll make our cut. Okay, so here we have our jig and we still have the through dovetail template uh, in here. So we're gonna take this out and I do believe that you can still do half blind dovetails just according to the label on here and a few things I've noticed in the manual. So if you wanna use the same template, you can. Um, it might just take a little bit more finessing and set up with the jig because it is recommended that if you are doing through dovetails that you use the um, template guide that's used for I think sliding dovetails and half blind. So half blind here and it has the half blind um, stop, which the other one was pretty bang on from the factory. So we're gonna test this one and see if it is as well. So let's put this in between the brass guide and the clamping mechanism. And I haven't changed the jig up. Um, I haven't tested the, the half blind yet. So I'm doing it live on video here. But I am using the same material, so it might not take too much setup. And let's see. Let's release this a little bit. Slide our work piece through. <clears throat> Get it all the way through. There we go. And we can clamp this down. And really what we want to do right now is just get the template level in place. So let's just hold that down right here, or you could put another work piece over here. So let's do that and clamp that down and clamp down the other side. Okay, so we've got the template partly set and also differing from the through dovetails. This is a work piece and what we're putting here will be a work piece because we'll be cutting the tails and the pins at the exact same time. So this is not a spacer board in this case, if you're wondering why it's putting a good work piece in there. So then let's slide our other work piece up. And I don't have these marked. These are just sample, like test pieces. So I'm not making a, a formal box or anything like that yet. Um, let's release this. And slide this guy up. And what we wanna do, and just to show you the setup process here, let's take our Allen key and loosen that and just shift that over all the way. What we wanna do, is we want to center this between this gap, between, so between this tine and, and the template itself, and then the furthest one. So we want to have it basically centered 
as close as we can. If you're off by a little bit, it won't be too bad. If you're doing um, a box, just make sure you're using the same settings. So we've got that in place. We know we have our template in place. So let's lock that piece in. Okay, so now that we have this locked in, let's just move this piece out of the way a little bit. Um, so now we wanna slide this stop over and then lock it in so that we can get these two work pieces to align properly. So we've got it slid over. Hopefully you can see that on the video. And we're gonna lock it down with that screw. And knowing that we have this centered between that space, we can then take this piece and slide it over. Make this pretty tight. There. Okay, and square it up. And let's lock that piece down. So Right now we're pretty close. So we have our work pieces in place. The only thing that we want to do now is we want to do a little bit of a fine adjustment here. And um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the little lines here and looking at it from this way, we want to make sure that's completely aligned to the gap um, in the work piece here. It's pretty close. So I think it's because I'm using the same depth of material as I was before. So this one is probably just slightly in front. Yeah, it's, I think that I just got to shift it a little bit. You just kind of close one eye and just kind of keep checking to see if that's lined up. And it's not a bad system, not perfect by any means, but Yeah, I think that's pretty much bang on. And if, if it doesn't work out, I have some other pieces and then we'll do another cut and make sure it is. So, um, so yeah, so we have our work pieces set. We have our template set. We're pretty much ready to cut. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the router setup pretty quickly and I'll explain what I'm doing, but then I'll probably fast forward through the majority of it. So what we wanna do is we wanna get our guide bushing into this adapter, which is very easy to do. And then we want to get our dovetail bit in the router. And similar to in the other video, we are going to keep it out a little bit. Uh, if we put it in too far, it won't reach for the, for far enough. So we're going to just keep it out just a, a little bit more. Uh, it'll still hold really well in the collet. So I'm gonna, just going to get these in there. All right, so now we have our bit set. So now let's take it over to the jig and we'll make sure that we get the depth set right. And then we're ready to make our cut. Okay, so you can see there that we're pretty close with the bit, but we want to get it just down there. Okay, so that's that's about there. So let's use that and we're going to make our cut. So let's get that set up. Okay. So this one's a little different in that the guide itself actually recommends doing a climb cut first, which is going from right to left. Uh, it's not something I've done too often. So I'm a little wary of it, but I think I can hold on to the router properly and just kind of ease it along. And it's really to reduce tear out. Climb cuts are, are can be used, um, but it's something that you definitely have to be careful with because the router could take off if you were holding it too loose or if you were trying to take off too much material. So I'm just gonna really ease along and the guide bushing is really gonna limit the amount that it takes off. So we're just gonna be taking just a tiny, tiny bit off. So I'm not too concerned about the climb cut in this regard and the manual does recommend it. And then we're going to basically go in and keep following this way and uh, make our cut. So. Um, before we do that, just to show you, I am wearing my protective equipment, so safety glasses, I'll be wearing a respirator, and hearing protection. So let me get these on, and uh, we'll get the rotor plugged in, then we'll do the cut. Okay, so there we have it, and you'll see that it's a little, again, a little different than what you would normally expect when you're thinking dovetails with these curves. So that's where, again, in my opinion, it, it's cheating a little bit, but um, again, it's gonna look visually beautiful. It's gonna be super strong. So 
um, don't worry too much about that. And so if you notice, like I did a bit of the climb cut, which would just kind of take off maybe a quarter of an inch along here. And then we went in and um, yeah, so let's unclamp these and see what the fit's like. Okay, so let's just take a look at these in a little more detail. So here we have these pins, yeah, pins. And um, so a little nice curve, but very clean lines. Again, we're using white oak in this case, um, which looks really nice. And then over here we have the tails. And so you see on the outer part, like how it looks exactly what, like what you'd expect. And then though, it's the, the curve here that just feels a little weird. But let's see how these fit together. And, oh geez, okay, it's tight. Um, let me grab a mallet and we'll see if we can hammer that in. Okay, so we got our mallet, so let's see. Uh, damaged those dovetails a little bit, but that's all right. Whoa. Okay, so these are the through dovetails. And let's just, let's just hammer that a little more. Just to see, they might just be a little proud. Oh no, that's pretty much bang on um, exactly what you'd expect. So with these dovetails with half blind, it's essentially blind. You're blind to the joinery used from this side. But then if you come over here, you see that they are dovetails. So they are hidden from the front, but visible on the side, which looks amazing on drawers and allows you to essentially use the front here as the front of the drawer, which gives you more volume in the drawer itself. So rather than putting it on a false front. So for those cases, these look fantastic. I'm very impressed with this. This is my first time doing them on this jig. So um, that's aligned perfectly. They're not too proud, like they're probably slightly, like let's see if it even picks up on video. Yeah, you can kind of see it down there. So you see that it's, gosh, not even a 64th, maybe a 64th, um, but you could sand that down right there and you'd be fine. So very happy with that. Um, let's just do a final review. All right, so there's not too much to say. Um, very happy with how the jig performed. Very easy to go from the through dovetail template to the half blind template. Really didn't have to make too many adjustments. Um, setting the router itself, uh, just doing it once felt really nice. So if you're gonna be repeating a bunch of these, it's gonna be very quick uh, to batch out some drawers or some boxes, kind of whatever you're looking to do. Um, very happy with the tightness of these, given that this is my first time use, using this template to do half blinds. and. Really for me, half blind is something that I really like and one of the primary reasons why I bought this jig because I really did not like cutting them. Um, so yeah, so very happy with the results. Um, kind of further confirmation that this was the right purchase for me and uh, hopefully this helps. Thank you for watching.